The following is a 360 degree video presentation best viewed on a mobile phone, tablet, or your desktop computer. My name's Neil Balthaser and I'm your host at Ultra Mobility, the channel all about Class B camper vans. If you're interested in Class B camper vans or are looking to buy, this is the channel for you. If you haven't done so already, I ask you to please consider subscribing. It's super easy. Just click the subscribe button and it'll help me continue to make great videos. We're inside a 2018 Winnebago 170A. Now I'm just going to start off this review by pointing one thing out. Look at this advertised price, $100,000. This is one of the top of the line Winnebago products, the Aero line, and it is absolutely stunning when you walk into it, you have to admit. I mean, the high gloss cabinetry, the rope lighting, uh, the stainless steel appliances, the polished Corian countertops. It's a very stunning van to come into. It looks gorgeous. It's mouthwateringly gorgeous. Now the 170A layout is really popular and part of the reason why it's so popular is because in the back you have a permanent setup for a set of twin beds which you can also make up into one large queen bed. But then also in the front you have this jump seat here which has two lap restraint seat belts and can be turned into a bed for like a grandchild or, or a single person. So you can just flip that bed out and there's a counter piece down below that comes out and then you can fill in the rest of it and you can have a little bed up front. So that's one of the nice things about the 170A is that permanent bed in the back and then the ability to carry two extra seat belted passengers. Now keep in mind those seat belts aren't shoulder restraints, they're lap restraints, but nonetheless legally they are seat belted so you can carry four passengers. So if you were a couple or you had kids or grandkids, this could accommodate you and your grandkids, which is what makes the 170A very appealing. Now, the lounge is very small. Where you're at down below, if you look, that covered up with tape, that's where the pole would go and the table would go. So it is kind of a, a cramped lounge, uh, surprisingly for a van of this size. This is built on the extended Sprinter chassis, so it's over 23 feet long. So the two front cab seats do swivel around and then you have two seats here, but it, it's, it, it is a bit crowded. Now, MCD shades, and I just pulled this shade down and look, <laughs> it's coming out. I mean, these are just little things, but it just, it bothers me when I walk into a new coach and I see stuff like that. It just, it, that bothers me. So, Anyways, that shouldn't be happening. The other thing is, ah, so they're awning style windows, but then you have this handle, you have to flip back down and this little, this is plastic and I swear to God, this is going to break on you in no time. These little plastic things, see they flip out and you push them back in, they're on all the windows. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of those, so I'm just, look for stuff like that, please. It's not a reason not to get this RV, but it's just, I wish they put something different on than that. As we come into the galley, you'll notice it's a very large galley. You have your two burner cooktop and then you have your marine style sink. And I'm not a big fan of the marine style sinks. And part of the reason is if you put it down, see this is the little on off switch here. And if it's not placed correctly, when I put this lid down, like look at that, it's actually right now, it, it's turning on. So you have to be very careful about that. Otherwise, see, look, it's turned the water on. You'll drain all the water out of your freshwater tank if you're not careful about that. So I, I'm not a big fan of the marine style sinks. But the kitchen's very large. You've got a nice Corian countertop. It's not as polished as, so there it goes, turning on again. It's not as polished the Corian's not as polished as some uh, higher end coaches, but it's, it is thick and it is very nice. You have two AC outlets over here and two AC outlets over there, which is nice to have four outlets. And you have plenty of storage underneath. Now I did keep in mind, this is a Winnebago, so they do use stick framing construction and staples, but look at this, the price is $100,000 for this van. 
Look at this rope lighting, beautiful high gloss cabinetry. It's got a Truma Combi, which means it combines the hot water heater with the regular heater and it's ducted heating. You've got two ducts back there. You've got one duct over here and the bathroom's ducted. That's pretty cool. Ducted heating in a $100,000 van of this quality on a Mercedes extended chassis. In addition, you've got, look at the screen back behind here. You've got multiplex wiring and just like the pleasure way, you've got a color touch screen that controls everything inside of the van. So all of the lighting, the awning control, you have your meters and gauges. You can turn on your water pump, your generator, all of it's controlled through the touch panel. Now I like color touch panels because they reduce the amount of clutter inside of your van. The less that you have of these little components to control every little thing like the awning and the generator and the water pump and the inverter and all this, and you can put it into one touch screen inside a van this size, it just cleans things up and makes it much easier for you. So that means that this Winnebago is using multiplex wiring for $100,000. That's great. Multiplex wiring means you can put control panels like this to control everything in various places. Now, for instance, these lights above you are dimmable. I just hold it. Isn't that cool? Multiplex wiring and dimmable rope lighting in a van for $100,000. Now, I'm not a big fan of the television seat where it is here, but it kind of has to be here because this is your lounge. But it just feels out of place in the galley and it takes up the counter space here. Now they again try to advertise it by saying that you can flip this around and people can watch it from out, outside but that's one of those things that just comes off to me as oh let's market this as an advantage when actually it's a little bit of a design deficiency in my estimation. This has that uh, accordion screen door. It's nice that you get a screen door for $100,000. I'm not a fan of these that are on rails mainly because they're difficult. You can see here, they, um, they're a little bit fragile and the railings down below the guide rails can get grit and stuff in them and it becomes uh, difficult to open and close them. I like the ones that just drop down and then magnetically open and close. Much easier, simpler, take up less space, easier to use. That's just me. Let's take a look inside the refrigerator. The refrigerator is very much the same as you would get on the Pleasureway Lexor or the Plateau series. So as you can see, it's around, I think, five cubic feet. It is a uh, three-way refrigerator. So you've got AC, DC, and propane, but it's manual. So you have to remember to switch it to whichever one you're going to switch it to, and there's a manual start. But, uh, but it is a nice big refrigerator, and I like the look of it with the handle and uh, the, the brushed metal here. Yeah, so here you are in the bathroom. It's a good-sized bathroom. There is ducted heating down below, stainless steel sink. What I like what I'm seeing in the bathroom is it's all one piece except for the bottom where the drain pan is. It's all one piece inside of the bathroom so there's no seals or seams or things that can break and for water to, to leak in behind. Um, so that that's nice. Now Winnebago, like other RV manufacturers, they have their own plastics molding parts of the manufacturing line so they can make and mold these exactly to their own specifications. But it's a, you know, it's a pretty good sized bathroom. These doors, you know, with the piano hinges, they do have the positive locks on the top. And at least they do have these hinges here. But it looks like when the doors are closed and you're inside the bathroom, you know, it can be a little bit tight. Uh, it'd be nice if they had the radius curved doors or some other mechanism where they can stick out a little bit. So that when you're showering, you know, you have a little bit more elbow room or something like that. You're in the bedroom of the 170A, and this is a permanent bed setup. So you've got two kind of twin beds set up here with the cutout in the middle. This is a nice setup because if either one of you want to get up in the middle of the night, it's easy if you just swing your legs out, come out and go to the bathroom. You don't have to climb over the other person. If you want a bigger bed, then you can just fill in this middle section. You've got a really big bed. This is a nice big bed. A taller person is going to be able to sleep in here just fine. You've got your own color television flat screen in the back for your bedroom. So you have two televisions in this van. And then you got lots of overhead storage and there's even a little bit of storage underneath as well. Two ducts for heating. Now this is not memory foam. So just be aware of that. So these are not gonna be as comfortable as a coach that has memory foam. 
I also, this is nice. I understand why they put this curved piece in here, but uh, it just, at the top of it looks weird and a little bit unfinished because it's not flush there. Just a little bit strange to me. Now above you, you see the air conditioner, but again, it's manually controlled here. So it's not integrated into the multiplex wiring and you cannot control the temperature of the air conditioner other than using these controls here. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. It's not the end of the world, but it's just something to be aware of that this is, you know, it's not connected into the thermostat control system of, of the van. Okay, some of the components are not as high end. So for instance, this is the King Jack antenna, but you have to manually kind of move it around unlike, let's say the Weingard antenna they use in the pleasure way, which is motorized and finds the own signals itself. And on Road Trek, they have their own version, which is fixed and you don't need to turn the antenna at all. But maybe you don't care about that because you're not going to be watching a lot of television. That's me. I don't ever use my Weingard antenna, but I'm pointing it out because these are things where some of the components are, are a little bit less than what you might get in a more expensive van. The other thing is I went to close these accordion doors on the bathroom and it's very natural to want to close them with your hands like this, but my hand got pinched in here really badly. And so that's why I'm not a fan of these accordion doors. You should think about stuff like that. If you got kids or grandkids or something and their little fingers and hands you know, get smashed in there, yikes, that's not gonna be nice. Uh, also, I hit my head on this, I always do. I don't like these overhead cabinets, they're small. I never used mine when I had one, but I always did hit my head on them. So this is something I always encourage you to do when you go inside of a van, is use, walk around inside of it and see what you bump, bump into, what you turn into. Do you hit your head on a cabinet? Do you pinch your fingers in a door or something like that? Because if you do it while you're looking at it, you're gonna do it a lot while you're living in it. So it's better for you to make note of those things. And you know, can you move around inside the cabin without tripping You know, over getting in and out of bed or coming in and out of the cabin? These little things, move around, use it, and make particular note of if something's annoying or if you're hitting something or bumping your head, because it's gonna happen over and over again for you. So I would make a note that I pinched my hand in there, I hit my head there, but I would also make a note that I'm not tripping anywhere, walking back and forth from front to back. There's no steps, I'm not tripping anywhere. So I like this 2018 Winnebago era 170A a lot. I especially like it at this list price. Look at that, $100,000, just a, just a touch over $100,000 for a Mercedes extended chassis that have a lot of really nice features in it, like the multiplex wiring, the touch screen, the Truma Combi, solar, the rope lighting, the beautiful high gloss curved cabinetry. This is a pretty incredible van for $100,000. But, you know, that's Winnebago. Uh, it's got the Corian countertops, but you're gonna get, you know, it is using the stick framing and it is using staples and things like that. So you just need to be aware of that, but pretty impressive and pretty nice van for $100,000. Well, what's my final thoughts and final recommendation on the era? This is a tough one for me because I really am blown away when I walk into the era. It's just stunning looking with just the cabinetry and it's very European looking and the, the, the finishes with the Corian counter and stainless steel appliances. It's, it's really something. But when I actually did the analysis and I thought about it, here's what I arrived at. It's one of the few camper vans that has that separate bed up front. So you sacrifice, you have a smaller lounge, but you do get another bed. So that might appeal to a family or it might appeal to some grandparents that want to take their grandchild along. But because that jump seat doesn't have the three point shoulder restraint seat belts for me, I wouldn't feel comfortable carrying my daughter, my family uh, in it uh, driving down the road. I, I just would feel more comfortable having the three point seat belts. Maybe that's different for you, but for me, because I'm not comfortable with that, then suddenly that bed up front doesn't make any sense because I'm not probably gonna be carrying anyone with me because I don't feel safe doing that. So now I just have a small lounge up front 
that I've sacrificed because I'm not using the bed. So that's kind of nullified. So if those two things don't matter to you and you still like it, then I suppose it's a, that's the van you should get because you just really like the way the interior looks and you want to be surrounded by that. And that's perfectly acceptable. But that's who I can only at the end of the day recommend it to if, if you're just blown away by how beautiful the interior looks. Now, as a final point, it's something that I want to talk about. And that is when we just talk about the look and the fit and finish of the of the era. It is stunning when you walk into it and it looks really great. Now, something that bothered me in it, and I, and I just want to talk to this point, is if you go back and you look at the video, you'll see that all the front facing parts of the cabinets are welded aluminum, it's the black. And it looks like at first blush, you're like, oh, wow, this is really high end. They're using welded aluminum for the framing of all their cabinets. And the reality is they're not, at least not on the era. The cabinet framing behind the black welded aluminum is actually still stick framing. It's stick framing with staples. And if you go in and you look at yourself, you'll see that as well. And so I just, I have, it just, it's a problem that I have. There's a lot of glitz that overwhelms you when you look inside of these RVs, just things that on the surface, like really shiny high gloss cabinetry, and then now putting welded metal face plates and things like that on the cabinets, which make you think at first blush that, oh, wow, I'm getting full welded aluminum cabinet framing, but you're not. It's just on the surface part of it. Now, some could argue and say, well, that wasn't the intent. The intent is it does add some support and stability by at least having that on the front faces and durability. And I don't disagree with all of that, but I tend to think in my heart of hearts that that was more of a, a marketing thing for them to be able to just put it on the front and and say look it, it looks really nice uh, and we're using welded framing and things like that and and it's not the case so I, I'm not accusing Winnebago of ever anything I'm just saying you need to be aware of that when you go into these RVs don't believe the things that you're seeing you have to pull back things you have to look at things you have to pull out drawers you have to ask questions you have to go online like I do and you have to look at other reviews and see if someone shows something you're like oh that doesn't look quite right there and reverse the video and take a look you got to do the research yourself because otherwise you're going to end up buying something you're going to be making some assumptions and buying it and it's going to turn out not to be the case so that's my recommendation I wish I could have a better recommendation for, for the 170a I, I, I do really like it and I think it's a great product in the marketplace but I, I want to be honest with you about after doing the final analysis where I landed on it and that's where I landed on it so I hope this review was helpful for you thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you haven't already I'd love if you became a subscriber it helps me continue to make great videos Leave a comment in the comment section below and I try to answer each and every one of them. We'll see you again next time on Ultra Mobility, your channel for Class B camper vans. Take care. Bye-bye.